And now, from the dark corners of the internet, where the exploits run wild, packets aren't the only things getting sniffed, and the cocktails and beer flow steady. It's Paul Security Weekly! This episode brought to you by the SANS Institute, the most trusted source for computer security training, certification, and research. Visit SANS.org to learn more. And by Tenable Network Security, creators of Nessus, the world's best vulnerability scanner. Jumpstart your security program today and evaluate Security Center CV, the continuous monitoring solution, at Tenable.com. And by Black Squirrel, pen test networks from your browser. Exploit the limits of network security through just a browser. Have a Chrome exploit in your toolkit? Good. But for the rest of us, there's Black Squirrel. Visit blacksquirrel.io for more information. It's now time to fire up a bag of capture, boil yourself an adult beverage, and give your intern control of your botnet Bitcoin mining rigs. Because here's your host. He's a man who plays a 10-year-old on the internet. A 10-year-old podcaster. Plays with a ten-year-old. Wow! 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 Um, uh, Paul Asadorian. <laughs> Welcome everyone to this edition of Security Weekly. I'm your host, Paul Asadorian. This is February twelfth, and this is episode four hundred and six. Very excited to be here, as always. Um, I I felt left out in the facial hair department with Jack and Larry, so I decided to concoct my own facial hair penis. On so, take wow, that for you what call it that is. a beard, do you? I don't. I didn't say beard. I said <laughs> facial hairiness. So Larry Pesci is here in the studio. Welcome, Larry. Ah, yes. Trying to figure out how to not filter my drink through my mustache. Yes. Well, it's, it's an effective oh. filter. Mr. Yep, Jack yes, Daniel is yes. here, who has no filter. I, right. <laughs> <laughs> Except for the gigantic beard. Yeah, that's that's yes. filter feeds. You know. Yes. Yes. On the lines via Skype. Uh, Security Weekly members, Joff could not make it, Carlos couldn't make it, John is on an undisclosed location outside of the U.S., so um, I'm just going to read a couple of announcements before we introduce our fabulous special guest for this evening. Uh, has the cold weather got you down? Warm up with Embedded Device Security Assessments, a two-day class hosted at the SANS ICS Summit on February 25th through the 26th. Security Week listeners receive a 10% discount when using the code SECWEEK10. Register at the link in the show notes on wiki.securityweekly.com. You can also go to securityweekly.com forward slash IOT. I've got a very special announcement. This class will also be offered at the Black Hat Security Conference this year. That's right. Embedded Device Security Hacking, taught by myself at Black Hat. You can take our course, which includes the training, as well as full access to the business hall, sponsor workshops, sponsor sessions, and the arsenal at the conference. So not only do you get the training, nice. but you can attend a limited number. You don't get access to the briefings, but right. you get access to the Black Hat conference uh, itself. So if you want to stay for Black Hat, you can do so. You can participate in all those things I just mentioned, or you can also pay extra for um, a briefings pass, which is still a separate purchase. I gotta ask if there's a discount. I don't know if there ever was. You know what? You should you should ask for a discount code of pen one five. Pen one five. P. Oh, <laughs> oh, I I get uh, it. Uh, uh. I get it. I get it, Larry. So Black Hat this year trainings are August first through the second, and third through the fourth. Again, securityweekly.com forward slash i o t. Register for our Black Hat class. Please, it's going to be a lot of fun. We'll be in Vegas. We'll race some hell in Vegas together. It'll be awesome. We're working on the iteration of the course <coughs> that will be um, represented at Black Hat. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. I've got uh, Nick in the studio, actually, um, this week and next, working on some updates. There'll be more updates for Black Hat. It's going to be awesome. You said awesome three times. Is I it going to be awesome? It's going to be awesome. awesome. Is it going to be awesome? It is going to be awesome. Awesome. Yes. Will the future be awesome? Uh, I'll, I'll give a free Hack Naked t-shirt to everyone who attends the class as well. How about that? <laughs> There's That's I'll throw worth it right free, there. Free Hack Naked t-shirt. It's worth it. That's right. All righty. So, next announcement. 
Ooh. Larry, you're teaching SANS Wireless 617 in Orlando, Austin, Baltimore, and Berlin, Germany. All details are in the show notes. Yep, all of those are before the end of June, and there will be more later in the year, I am sure. So, but if those, you, those are ones for the first half of the year, at least. If you just cannot wait <coughs> to get a Hack Naked t-shirt, because maybe you're not planning on attending my, my class, which makes me very sad. However, if you want to order a t-shirt... Shop.securityweekly.com, discount code IHACKNAKED. Go and buy your T-shirt um, today. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter. Join our Google groups, mailing list, YouTube channel, all that stuff. Wiki.securityweekly.com. They're the lovely Hack Naked T-shirts and our lovely models. Those can be all yours for the low price of whatever we're selling them for minus 10%. Um, B-Sides Boston is May 9th in Cambridge, Mass., Got a great topic or a fresh new idea? Share it with the community at Besides Boston 2015. Call for Papers is now open. The deadline's March 1st. So the deadline is fast approaching. The link to that CFP is in the show notes. So make sure you go there and submit for Besides Boston. It's Larry, Jack, are you going to be here? Across the street this year. It is Let not I in the same venue. Will you be here, Jack? It is not at Microsoft Nerd. You it were here last year. It was the very street sad. at... Uh, Microsoft's uh, other one building. Cambridge Center, yeah. whatever. So it's it's around the corner across the street. I uh, will be there. Um, I was there. We just missed each other last year. Oh, okay. I, I was the first day. Keynote, you were, you know, I was second first, day. Yeah. I was second day. You were first day. Yeah. Yep. I don't. Uh, I don't know. Um, May 9th. I have something to submit for CFP. I think depending on what my schedule looks like. I submitted my <coughs> CFP today, and Jack is the only one in the world who's seen my CFP other than besides Boston. I've, um, I've been invited to join a panel and, and rant, uh, which I don't know if that uh, that's one. I li- that's my favorite kind it, of CFP where somebody says, send me a bio, and then like a month later rant. they say whether or not I'm supposed to show up and win. Is I just I got this crazy idea for a talk that I've yep. never given before, so I'm, is I'm it kind of excited USPTO about it. No. one? Nope, it oh. is not. No, I've never given this talk before, oh. ever. It's oh. brand spanking new. So I'm excited about it. And, and we know how much you like spanking. That's this is true. Both giving and receiving. <laughs> On to the interview for this show. <laughs> Mr. Deviant Alum is with us. Of course, while paying the bills as a security auditor and penetration testing consultant at the core group, Deviant's also the board, a board member on the U.S. Division of Tool, the open organization of lock pickers. Every year at DEF CON and ShmooCon, Deviant runs a lock pick village and has conducted physical security training sessions at a host of conferences, including Black Hat, Sands, DeepSec, TorSec, HackCon, ShackCon, Hack in the Box, Active Party, so on and so forth. His favorite amend- 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 amendments to the I need another drink to the US Constitution are in no particular order the first, second, ninth, and tenth. Deviant, welcome back to the show. It's nice to see you, my friend. Nice to see you. Maybe we'll celebrate the twenty first amendment tonight, but yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we celebrate that every night. Uh, every yes indeed. <laughs> indeed. I'm just muddling up night. another sugar cube here because I took too long. You know, and what, so what are you what part. are you concocting over there that you're muddling sugar cubes? Is that an old fashioned I, I That know is the standard deviation of an old fashioned. And yes. I, I know what your favorite ingredient is to the old fashioned. Would it Do be you know? black walnut maple bitters? Black walnut bitters is exactly what I'm adding into this sucker. Yes, and, uh, I yeah. I I love the black walnut bitters. It's awesome. It's Cheers. awesome. Yes, we're drinking sidecars. We get in in New England. We call Ooh, them sidecar. So sidecar. 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 So right it's up. Good. It's good stuff. Um, so yeah, you're across the country from me, but you'll be right down the hall at Black Hat. So when so you'll be a Black Hat. Yes. When Security sure. Weekly class fills up, as I know it will, well, and you're you. sad, come to ours because you know we're not that uncool. We can we can have a good time. Well, and Deviant's going to teach you how to physically penetration test things, which I think is, you know, it's awesome. It's yes. awesome. Yeah. And, and, I, I, and I've, you, been, I've been by his class and seen all the students awesome? locked out of the classroom. Yes. <laughs> and they have to get back in by breaking in. <laughs> it, it, Deviant, I was at, I forget, a SANS conference and you were teaching, mm-hmm. and you were showing everyone at the SANS conference, which takes place in a hotel, how to bend the bar – that reaches under the door to open the yeah. hotel room doors, and they would like a crowd kind of gathered around, yeah. and uh, it's just so awesome, dude. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, we don't officially tell the hotels we're doing that usually, but not. yeah, the bypassing stuff. I mean, you can you can practice on locks and for picking and impressioning right at the workstation at your desk. For bypassing, I mean, there's really no way to do it but to do it. So yeah, <laughs> you gotta get under those doors sometimes. Yep, you gotta have a door to practice. 
how, Opening how, doors. how long does it take to show someone how to how to do that deviant? 30 seconds. I mean, are you making the tool or are you just showing them how to use it? If you're making the tool, uh, a minute. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe a minute, 30 seconds. And so be, it really anyone can do it kind of thing. Oh, yeah. Now, if I've taken a towel and I've rolled it up in a ball and I've put it through the handle, does that, how great does it, how, like, how long does that add to your time? To so do? that will definitely slow you down. That's, I mean, the, the joke originally when this technique, this was known to like feds and operators for a while. And then Bobby Wells and some of his friends demonstrated it at a German conference for the first time, I think, publicly. And their joke solution was like, oh, you know, you can just roll up a towel. Always know where your towel is. Yes. Wedge it in the door handle. And like it stops the, the, the – they use a tool by Kedex. We make our own. Sometimes we use the Kedex tools as well. They're like, yeah, it blocks the tool. Now, the solution to that is something else that we recommend. And Nickerson, is, you know, he has in his little red team kits whenever we make them for him, is a bore scope. So if you go under the door with a bore scope and you look around – which is useful if you're trying to snake the tool up. You can have a buddy there being like, no, go left, go right. You're on it, pull. So if the buddy's like, wow, I see a towel, you know, just bend the tip of the tool a little bit like a hook mm -hmm. and whack that down and yank the towel out of there I and then just, so. you know, reform the tool. And I'd say it would take, you know, five five minutes on the outside. Mm -hmm. In general, if you're trying to break into something and you can't do it in about five minutes, you, you're doing something wrong. Do something else. There's got to be an easier way that will take less than five minutes somewhere else. Just mm -hmm. find it. Right. Interesting. And, and boroscopes are cheap now, too. Yeah. But, oh, I mean, yeah. good enough for that sort of thing. Lee Valley mm -hmm. has them on sale every now and then for dirt cheap that are pretty good. Mm -hmm. And you can, you know, do at-home endoscopy or colonoscopy, for that matter. If you, yeah, they have know, a little light they on the end. For that? Uh, yeah, let's, not a cystoscopy, <laughs> though, because they're a little big for that. Yeah. Ooh, Ooh. I'm, uh, Ooh, there I there are a couple of people who know what that is, and they're really uncomfortable just thinking yes, about that. it goes in the penis. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, did I say it out loud? Oh. Yes, you did. That, maybe the first time you said that phrase. No, maybe not. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, uh, hey, so, Doc, uh, that's supposed to be an exit. Uh, <laughs> so, so, Dave, you wanted to talk about some uh, some gun safe uh, resource that you've been working on yeah. recently. Ooh, this is relevant yeah. to my interest because I need to be in the market for a gun safe. Yes, after being so, yelled at up my, by my wife. <laughs> <laughs> so, in general, um, we like to the biggest thing that we've done about gun safes, and there's been you can look at the the gun safe talk that was uh, safe to armed in 30 seconds was the original name of our talk at DEF CON years ago mm -hmm. when we looked at a lot of popular like lock boxes. Where I mean, I have a lot of big Liberty safes at home. And that's kind of the takeaway. The takeaway is if you want to lock things up properly from an assailant or from even, you know, curious teenagers, you're talking about a proper gun safe. The little lockbox products that are on the market and you see them all the time at sporting goods stores, they might be, in some instances, suitable for like your carry piece. You come home at the end of the day, you don't want to, you know, dial a whole combination. You want to put your carry piece in something small. Maybe some of them are okay for that. But they're not long-term storage solutions. They're certainly not usually very tamper up, like tamper-resistant solutions. Mm -hmm. There's only a handful that are actually very, very safe. Lately, there was one. Whatever, we can just call out manufacturers because I wrote sure. to them. You know, you know, I told them I'm like, hey, so this is a problem, and the response is just it blows your mind. There's a product called the Gun Box. That's all it is. It's been fe they have really good marketing. So they've been featured on like Firearm Blog, and they've been featured, I think, on the Blaze, like Glenn Beck's, you know, cable mm -hmm. show for libertarians. But the gun box is this beautiful design. They put all their money into like the aesthetics of the design, and it's either fingerprint or RFID. But this beautiful like aluminum brushed clamshell has a bypass. Like it literally has a stick a this thing in a hole and flick it, and it'll pop open. And I wrote them. I was like, oh my god! So you have this bypass method. Like I'm, I'm, con I'm, I'm a concerned consumer. I'm more I could interest in your product, you know, that kind of thing. And their official company response was, yes, there's a bypass, but it's very hidden and don't worry, it's very secure. And then I bought the thing on Amazon and I, uns it's like a little drain plug. It's like a little hex screw plug on the bottom of it. So you unscrew the plug and then you just stick the hex head key in it and wiggle it side to side and the whole thing pops open. And, this and I wrote gun, them. This is gun box? It's a gun, it's, it's a gun safe. It's and cool, I wrote but it's, them, called, it's called gun box? The gun, uh, the gun box, I believe, yeah. The gun box. It's, and they have an, RF, an RFID one as well? They have an RFID one. They have a biometric one. Uh, we ordered the biometric one to experiment with it. They shipped us what we thought was the biometric one. 
it has the same ins- either either someone did a dodgy Amazon return yeah. and like sent the wrong one back, or they send the same one sheet of instructions for every box. Right. Because ours like had the instructions and the dip switches for biometric, but there was no biometric reader for the thing of thumbprint. But yeah, I wrote. I was like, this can't be right. Like this is this is your bo- this is like if the battery fails, you just stick a rod in a hole and wiggle it around. And like, yeah, but don't tell anyone that that would be wrong. That's bad security. I'm like, oh, wow, you don't understand security through obscurity at all, dude. <laughs> oh. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So it's a neat idea. Like, I get it. I get that you can't use a proper gun safe for all your guns all the time. There's the occasional, Yeah. well, maybe not for you all up in New England, but there's the occasional carry piece that a lot of us have to deal well, with. Yeah, then there's that. Um, Vermont. Yeah. Vermont. So, <laughs> yes, sir. So what I have one at home that you got to enter a combination with like mm-hmm. four different buttons on the top mm-hmm. of the safe. Like how are how are those? Um, that's probably by MicroVault, if I had to guess. I think it is. And yeah, yeah so the MicroVault multi pad combination is nice. It also has an override lock. It the does. override lock on yours is probably a tubular lock. It is. And yeah, I know that I know that safe pretty well. That was in our DEF CON talk. That's actually what I keep in the back of my truck, mm-hmm. uh, underneath the bed of the truck. I've swapped out my tubular lock for a Asa Abloy like Protec cylinder, oh, and okay. I really like that. I, there's a thread on what is the gun blog? It's a bl- gun blog called Every Day No Days Off. Mm-hmm. So E N D O. Uh, you can like look up E N D O gun safe. Somebody linked to our gun safe talk, and a bunch of people said, "Oh my god!" Because in the talk we showed. Like this micro vault, we swapped the lock, and I like it a lot now. And everyone's like, oh, my God, how do I do that? So there's a bunch. <laughs> if you read the comments, mm-hmm. the one time I'll ever tell people to read comments, read yeah. the comments, you'll see people talking about which exact Abloy cylinder it is and how you – It's it was like a 20-minute process, right, and I'm right. super happy with it now. Because awesome. that tubular lock is no good. Oh, it's pretty bad. Yeah, it opens in a couple seconds. <laughs> <laughs> nice. If you have a tubular pick, you know, yep. got to have the right tools. Seven right. Or, seven Every or, student in our training gets a tubular gets pick. Gets a tubular right. pick, right. Now, yeah. seven or eight pin. It is a straight seven pin. Okay. The, you'll, you'll, I've seen an eight pin once in the field. Wow. And it's super super uncommon. It was like a little key box, like a little lock box to uh-huh. key, key, key keys in. Which is the, the, the you want that one. <laughs> right. It's, it's insane, right? That's, yeah. that's something else we talk about sometimes. It's We love telling stories in our trainings. By the way, if you're a pen tester... Add this to your scoping and like legal document. Add a, add a clause that says we will never disclose blah 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 from our tests. But security is an ever changing landscape, and we reserve the right to tell our students about experience we've gained on the job. So that you know, sanitize your stories. Mm. Tell people the stories from the field as long as you've got your base covered with that one line, and it makes a lot of sense. Mm. So yeah, we tell the story of this like door we couldn't open because it was a Schlage Primus, but there was a little key keeper box like way up top tubular lock so you know tubular pick the key came out of it and we're like well boy that's great it sounds like a video game <laughs> right you need to get the blue key to get right. to the red key to yeah. get to the reactor core and then <laughs> shoot imps with your double barrel shotgun and <laughs> oh, that's i'm awesome. old that's awesome um so where, where was i going from here so other so what is, so swapping out the lock on the micro vault mm-hmm. is the way to go for that oh yeah i love that um, I, I like i use that are there other uh, safes that you would recommend or not recommend sure. for throwing your, sure. your guns in? And I'll the caveat is always that I like I don't work for any of these companies. Uh, some of them, there's one dealer whose name, uh, the Center of Mass, is the name of the website. And a guy named Patrick mm-hmm. wrote to me because he saw I was doing gun safe stuff, and he's like, "Oh man, you know, I'd love to check out these locks." And I checked with the manufacturers. I said, "Hey, I've got a guy, and I want to evaluate the security of some of these products because he's like a business, he's a small business owner, and he's trying to sell them." And he's like, I asked the manufacturers if they're interested, and they said, F no. <laughs> of course <laughs> not. <laughs> they don't know. But so he sent, he sold them to me at like dealer cost, so I like him. So he sells the micro. He also sells one called a lock safe, it's SAF, lock safe. And that's what I actually keep in my like closet in my house. So my daily carry piece, which used to be an HK, now it's a little Walther PPS. That, you know, fingerprint reader goes right in. They only lock the mechanical override on it if the battery dies. And the battery is external, so you can change it. But if the for any reason the biometric dies, the mechanical lock is a cross lock. It's a cruciform lock, which is not, you know, I mean, they're cross picks. You can buy them, but it's not most people's normal thing to attack. And when we tried it, I couldn't pick it easily. 
during my talk at DEF CON, uh, Joey, Lost Knowledge, really cool dude. I think he's, uh, he's still a tenacity, probably. Joey picked it open, and that was like, that blew everyone's mind. But nobody else got it. It's, um, it's robust. It's a nice, it's a good enough solution for what you need it for. And that's, that's what most security mm. is, right? You don't have to, like, overpay for everything all the time. You have to, it's a golf bag. You put the tools that you need in it, you put the golf clubs you need to hit the shot you need to swing at. Right. Um, have you seen the ones that you build into the wall and it looks like a mirror and then you can... Oh, yeah. Yeah, Those like a lot really of... really cool. Yeah. Um, I've never played with what the mechanism is, so a lot of them are just sort of like hidden compartments. Yeah. I've seen the mirror drops down, and I don't know if it's on hydraulics or if it's a latch lever. Yeah, but one I've is never... like a slide. One of them... Sli I, it looked like it slid over. Maybe it opens up like a cabinet and it's hinged, but it's a mirror. I think this one did have a lock, or maybe it was an option to get a lock. You get it with or without, I guess. I gotta say, you know, anyone who wants to write to me, I think my email is going to be on your, you know, your wiki. It so is, yes. If you have, if you have any gun stuff you're curious about, send me one. I will not break it too badly, and I'll send it back. <laughs> if, if I break it, and you want to know what, like, if I break it, I'll pay for it. And if I don't break it, I'll send it back to you with a full write up of, you know, whether it's good or not. Awesome. Awesome. Um, so one of the things, because I know that there's people like you out there, Deviant, and you're training people as well. I, I know that mm -hmm. inevitably, and of course my son, I, I'm teaching him how to pick locks, which means you need to rethink security for your entire house. Right on. So right on. on my gun safe, I actually put a smart thing sensor so that mm -hmm. it sends my wife and I an alert on our phones anytime that sensor is broken. So anytime you open the gun safe, it'll send you an alert. So I've kind of... Cool. It's kind of the way I think about security for an organization. Like I Defense know that, in depth. Yeah, the, you can mm -hmm. never prevent 100% of the attack, so you got to be able to put some detection in Detect and be able fly. to react quickly. And I've kind of put the same thing on my safe, so when any of my safes pop open at home, I get an alert. Now, of course, you can try and get that lever, that uh, magnet off and make it stick and open the safe without it. Mm -hmm. It would probably be tricky. Um, you probably have to get both of them off, like tape them together, and peel both of them off um, mm -hmm. to, to make it not break contact. But that's kind of my strategy. I was wondering what you thought of that. That's awesome. That that's really cool. And it's cool that you kind of roll your own, that someone's not expecting it. I mean, it's not like you have crazy thieves coming in just for your super antique, you know, guns. Right. The Lassiter pistol, as it were, is like in Paul's house. There's like four Firefly flans laughing at that joke. <laughs> so, yeah. Like, you know, they, it's not like, you know, someone's coming in and they say, oh, we took photos of his safe and we know exactly where, to, you know, oh, but he homebrewed his own thing. Right, no, right, I, right. I believe in that a lot. I just think that's great to have any kind of sensor. Uh, funny, that kind of loops back to the gun box because the gun box has like a tilt and movement sensor. Mm -hmm. But if you watch, there's like a video on our, on my blog or the core group blog. I don't know which one. It's probably on mine. Where, like, I literally just, like, slide it off the table a little bit mm -hmm. and, like, get the set screw and, like, pop it open. But instead of lifting the lid where this, all the electronics are, I just, like, lift the bottom down and, like, take oh, the guns out and, like, close it back up. And, like, nothing goes off. So, it, yeah, your sensor, sensor sounds way better. No, right. it sounds way better in yours. Nice. That's cool. Yeah, they have, like, lift and tilt sensors for, like, garage yeah. doors and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. it's probably a pretty similar kind of thing. I would, um, I would wonder if you could put that sensor inside the safe. But mm -hmm. it's probably metal, so the RF would probably not make it outside of the safe. It, it might, it might, it might, uh, it might. I don't know if those are. I think those are Z-Wave, and it's a, it might not. It might you not. know, there is a, worth a try. if people have uh, really good safes that, in general, like for documents and secure, you know, data storage, there's a unit called a security safe, and the secure safe, it is there's like light sensor, there's there's atmospheric, so there's all different sensors. It's basically, if you get the safe open through whatever means. Maybe somebody compromised the combination or they tried to manipulate the dial or they just brute forced it. Like there's actually, if you've never been in any of like our safe trainings, there's an auto dialer. Just, it just dials every combination. It's called an IT. The best one's the ITL 2000. Now, wait a minute. You know? I watched that show Scorpion on TV, oh, Deviant, oh, and they I just put it. a glass of water on the top of the safe and they can break into any safe that's out really? there. Really? Is that the way it works? No? Well, never have I found <laughs> Hollywood to be wrong, so maybe. <laughs> uh, so but, you don't um, you don't teach the glass of water mechanism in your in your no. class? No, I don't. Not I can't yet. fathom what this could be. You you have to go watch the Scorpion. You Okay. You know, purely no 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 no, 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 no. let me finish. Don't let me do that. Let me finish. Him. Purely for entertainment value and nothing else to <laughs> laugh at how inaccurate that show is and how horrible 
the writing is. I, and I also, as a like, nerd, to like make corrections, to be like, no, that, that'll never work. I, I, I couldn't get past the dangling the Ethernet cable out of the open trap door under the... Yeah, that's in episode one. Fortunately, yeah, uh, all the episodes aren't that horrible. They put the most horrible yeah, elements in the first episode. Dangling the patch yeah. cable out of the landing gear was yeah. just brilliant. But, so there probably only will be one season of that because it's so hard. No, it's a hit. The thing is, the is stupid it? thing is popular, which tells anyway, you how where good were we we're at PR. Sorry. Deviant's talking about locks. Glass of water I'm, on top I'm of the safe. Have you ever seen that, Deviant? Glass of water doesn't work. No, I've never no. seen glass of water. Okay. But the secure yes, please, safe, if, uh, if you get the safe open, like I was saying, for example, the most common way that if someone with no skill, Jack. they would use an auto dialer. Uh, if you don't have an auto dialer, get yourself in touch with Renderman. How many of you know Renderman? Uh -huh. uh, he has an ITL 2000 that he like lets people in the community get access to if you need it. Very low fee. But let's say you get it open, all of a sudden, if you open a safe illicitly, and there's a module in there, a little box that mm -hmm. starts beeping and like getting angry, oh shit, you have to disarm that very quickly. And if you don't have the keys and codes to disarm it, it will either, well, there's various versions. They can spray noxious chemicals, they can burn up whatever's in the safe. There's all kind of, so the idea of defense in depth and layers yeah. of security. That exists for safe modules as well. I mean, I was even thinking like a, a temperature, humidity sensor kind of thing. It, mm -hmm. it, like I noticed because I have those in my humidors, right? So when I open the door to my humidors, the temperature and humidity, well, humidity anyway, can change very rapidly when you go from a closed yeah. environment to an open environment. Oh, yeah. Um, so that, that can be an, also an indication that it's, that it's open. So it kind of makes me think I should put a temperature and humidity sensor in the gun cabinet as well and monitor that Good. for deviations. Yeah. As kind of div and these sensors Especially are pretty cheap. I mean, these sensors are like... You know, anywhere from twenty-five to fifty bucks a pop. So absolutely, um, I, I really like. So, and along those lines of uh, the smart, I have a Smart Things uh, home automation system. They also mm -hmm. make uh, are they Z-Wave or Zigbee locks, or a combination, or are there different options? Uh, different options. So they're they're locks um, that are control, and they sell them at Lowe's, or you get them online too. Mm -hmm. They're like two hundred dollars, roughly. Yeah. Um, are, have you looked at any of those, Deviant? Yeah, like the Link and uh, you know the Kivo and things like that. Yeah. Uh, which I someone's going to yell at me on Twitter if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure uh, Z-Wave is just some weird proprietary version of Zigbee that came out. And yeah, so I know that Shane Lawson, Valinex on Twitter, mm -hmm. uh, him and his buddy Dasman before uh, you know he was in the Fools, they used to be tinkering with this for a while, and they had this gloriously ethical idea that sounded like I would rather slam my endowment in a windowsill. Uh, you said you're PG-13. I didn't want to just say cock really loud on your show. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay, Paul. You can Paul. say it they once. Said, you can that's say, that's say it once. That's okay. Paul right. was playing with his cock earlier. <laughs> so they said they were trying to basically reverse engineer and attack a Z-Wave lock without violating like the API agreement. Like they licensed it and they weren't reverse engineering it or they were doing something way more legal intrusive than anything I could imagine. Mm -hmm. So I assume they either gave up or someone put a gun in their mouth. But yeah, or, I know that they it, were playing it, with it. I've never played with it just because there's so many. Usually it's still a mechanical cylinder. Absolutely. It's like a mechanical cylinder plus or whatever. I'll yep, just yep. pick the mechanical cylinder. Yep. Yep. I, I may know somebody that's working on something very mm -hmm. similar. Without may, the licensing agreements in that, place. That maybe. may be on camera right now. Okay. <laughs> I mean, um, I have one of those locks sitting on my desk. I yeah. mean, uh, yeah, interesting. Your yes, friend my Bob. friend Bob. Bob, because there's a little bit of Bob in all of us, right? That's right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That Bobby gets sometimes, around. sometimes it's his cock. Sometimes it's his thoughts. Now, see, that's <laughs> twice, and you just blew a PG-13 rating there, Larry. Thanks what? What that. is his chicken? Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> In that case, then we can still say cock, I guess. Anyway. <laughs> Didn't that school change their name? They were the Gamecocks, and then they got tired of everyone buying their school equipment and like having cocks hats. I don't know. <laughs> South Carolina. Somebody, somebody's from South Carolina, I'm sure. They, they're going to write in on Twitter. So they became the donkeys instead, the jackasses? Probably, right? Yeah. If you live in South Carolina, you want to write us about your cocks. That sounds like it. <laughs> You know, so what, what else is going on, Deviant? Uh, you have some course updates. Um, oh, yeah. I don't think you really – Do you had just started teaching maybe the last time you got on the show or – like what, so, yeah, what other yeah, kind of things so, are you covering in your class, specifically like the most recent things that you've added? 
So we've added, it's com it's interesting, we've added a lot of high-tech things, we've added more of the electronic locks, and we've also added just some of the content that a few students are like, hey, how come you never include X, Y, or Z? Like, so basic that we're like, wow, really, you guys you guys care about that? Like, like bypassing a little display cabinet like wafer lock? And they're like, yeah, that's not, you know, all this stuff. Because like, those are in offices like, everywhere. Right. <laughs> exactly. So our new hardware kit, because students in all of our classes get like a pretty big hardware kit. And the new kit, we used to be very focused on the locks. It was, and there's still a really nice set of locks, but we had like padlock, all different sample locks. And the tools were, you know, it was like 50% locks, 50% tools. And now it's like way tipped in the tool direction. It's just a ton of extra bypassing tools for all different locks. It's a ton of different attack shimming tools. The pick kit's still the same. We've added a tubular pick. We've added like a big impressioning handle. We've added, you know, Slim Jim tools. And instead of it just being my idea when I first made the class was I want to teach people here's what you need to kind of go learn on your own when you leave. And now it's still sort of that, but I'm like, you know what? If you want to learn on your own, like you can find a hardware store. You can go buy some more padlocks. I want to dump a ton of extra like attack gear in the kit. I actually have to credit Nomad, one of you know, like Robert, one of our guys, uh, he's a junior partner in the firm now. And he was he's been like at my ear, he's been constantly like, we gotta add come on man, I got look at these tools, we gotta look at this thing. This is badass, add it in the kit, man. So yeah, our our kit is way more like it's not just an academic kit, it's it's a field kit, it's an attack kit now. Nice, nice. And I'm really happy with that. Now, how do you recommend folks deal with that to get it home when they travel to your course and yeah. or and or how do you deal with them when the question of law enforcement comes up so good good question two part question there the first part stupid easy getting stuff home if you are flying anything that is under 7 inches in length and has no bladed edge is a legal tool for carry on now you know you can be like you're going to tell a guy as TSA, like, no, some dude I saw on the internet named Deviant said this is fine. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like I say that I all the time when I go through airport security. It works. <laughs> Ostensibly, I mean, that actually is the policy. And if you want to go find it and print it out, fine, do that. Tape it to the case. <laughs> yeah. If, well, here's, here's my quick rundown for anyone who has trouble at airports. Uh, if you ever get some static, A, be like calm and collected. You know, you guys are all social engineers. You know, like, no. Of course, this is fine. Um, you're mistaken, but I'm not going to say you're mistaken because that makes you feel bad and defensive. I mean, he's like, no, I'm sure. Um, go ahead and get your LTSO or your STSO. I'm sure they can clear this up. If you're not familiar at home, LTSO is the two striper, STSO is the three striper, basically the superiors. And just, you know, wait there. Be like, no, I'm fine right here. Go ahead and wait till they come over and always give them an out. You know, when the STSO is like, oh, what's wrong here? It'd be like, oh, there was some confusion. Uh, maybe, I don't know if you guys have the measuring tool. We want to make sure these are under seven inches because that would make them okay, as you know, for, for carry-on baggage. And let them, like, F around and pretend that they're talking. Uh, if that really doesn't work, if you really get stonewalled at the airport, you can always be like, wow, all right, I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, you know, obviously we had a difference of opinion there. Uh, I'll go ahead and wait here for you to voucher that and uh, just, like, stand there and be like, what? Be like, oh, no, well, um, this is... <laughs> I can't just like let you take it. This is my company equipment, so you go ahead and voucher that. You write that up, and uh, I need a I need a receipt for that if you're gonna you know we're gonna take it, and then I'll I'll go ahead and be on my way after that. And half the time, you know, again, give them an out. Be like, unless I missed it, maybe I misunderstood, or you know, maybe let's get you know STSO Johnson back over here. We'll, we'll clear this up, and then they'll pretend to talk and be like, oh, actually, sir, uh, you know, this isn't really that long. Uh, That's what she said. Last, <laughs> last thing. Is, um, if you fly out of one airport all the time, or like my home airport, know the name of the CSM at your airport. That is the customer service manager. That is the TSA personnel who doesn't wear a blue pretend police shirt. They wear the suit. Uh -huh. They are like the top tier person at that airport. And just be like, oh, really? Oh, I'm so sorry uh, to hear that. Um, go ahead and uh, get me your name of your CSM because I'm sure we can just clear this up after the fact. I'm going to go get that flight. And in the end, you know, you usually get through. So, yeah, if you're in our class, virtually everything's okay. The only thing they'll get angry about is the file, the the, the impressioning file, kind of big, kind of pointy, kind of angry. We always bring flat rate envelopes to class with us. So if you want to yeah. just mail your shit home. Yep. Right. How about check bags? Check, 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 check bags? bags? Totally fine. Totally fine. Nobody's effing around in your check bag unless they think you've got, you know, I don't know, drugs or something in there. Or a butane torch lighter. Yeah, of course, right? Yeah, don't put the lighter because that'll just, you know, ruin the world apparently. It will. Um, yep. 
And, and I, I was going to say long. Oh, uh, yeah. so, so, I, so yeah, then, then what, what about about law enforcement when they get home? Yeah, or, so or second, being in the possession of burglary tools. So in my bio, you mentioned that I'm on the board of Tool, the open organization of lock pickers. Mm-hmm. We show up and we educate people. The Tool website, that's Tool with three O's. Dot us has a link on our education page, I believe, or it might be on the meetings page for different chapters, but it has a link to the U.S. map and all of the state laws concerning lock picks. Virtually all states are green on that map. Mm-hmm. Most states, unless you're doing something blatantly illegal, like breaking into somewhere, having lock picks is totally fine. There's a handful of states where mere possession of the pick tools is considered evidence of your ill intent. But, I mean, that's – again, you're not getting found guilty. You're just getting – that's an end run around innocent until proven guilty. Right. You have to offer up another excuse. Well, I just took this course and I paid all this money and I have this nice little certificate and I'm a pen tester. should be fine. In general, the rule with most security and most hacking is what? Like don't be a jack wagon and yeah. you probably yeah, – yeah, Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Now, Rhode Island's not on that list, right? Because state laws around some of this stuff are really weird. Well, I'm gonna now. I'm gonna go take a look at that. Yeah, yeah. like and, and Rhode Island, the laws on uh, tasers and stun guns mm-hmm. completely yep. illegal to even possess unless you have a pistol permit. Taser Sounds or stun fair. gun. So Rhode Island, what you want to look up in Rhode Island is Rhode Island Code Section 11, Subsection 8, Subsection 7, making, repairing, or possessing burglary tools. Whoever makes, mends, or does any work connected with the making or mending or has any possession of blah, 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 pick lock, nippers, implement of any kind, adapted for blah, blah, steal in front from another property, commit any other crime, knowing the implement to be adapted, now here's the key, with intent to use or employ or allow equipment to be employed for this purpose, yeah, yeah. shall so, be in prison for not more than 10 years. So again, it's not just the possession, it's, it's knowing the intent. Yeah. intent. Yeah. Right. So you could get one of those little vibrating toothbrushes and you could know that it could well, be modified. I was concerned because if you look up the laws and what weapons you can carry on you, as I've mm-hmm. studied the Rhode Island laws on that, they actually list out kung fu weapons. There's actually the term kung fu in the Rhode Island laws awesome. for what you can carry on you. It's freaking oh, – go look it up. If you don't believe awesome. me, go look it up. It's really awesome. Yeah, you can't have like a blade over a certain length or any wow. kind of nunchucks or – uh, swords or any no other. It snaps. actually says kung fu weapons. That's awesome. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. So, Devin, I've got a little bit of a follow-on question to that. Sure. Like, uh, state laws and knowing that you're a uh, a, a gun person, um, mm-hmm. sort of to the yeah, the quote burglary tool stuff. I know that in some cases, I've seen folks recommend that if you don't want to get your shit stolen when you mm-hmm. fly, uh, travel with a firearm. And right. declare the firearm and right, right. all that stuff. Now, the question that I've always found to, to be one difficult to, to answer is, how do you deal with that depending on the location where you're going to end up? Let's say I'm going to travel to Florida and I don't want my shit to get stolen, so I put a handgun in it and declare it. Mm-hmm. What happens when I'm in Florida? What kind of licensing do I need so, in yeah. Florida? Any of that um, kind of stuff. You've got kind of two different answers to that question, which is a very valid question for a number of people, especially where we, like I'm from Jersey originally, so yeah, not not a friendly place. Effectively, the gun owner's rights, the gun owner's, the safe passage provision in the Gun Owners Act of, I want to say, 86, allows you to pass through certain territories where what you possess may be restricted as long as you are traveling through. You're not stopping, you're not you know, visiting Aunt Tilly, you're not staying there for the night, you're just going through. So if you were to, let's say, fly into New York City with a Title II, like just you know, fully sure. automatic M4, you could, under the, under the Gun Owners Act, you can do that, provided you immediately claim your luggage and immediately go wherever you're going. Immediately get it like a taxi or maybe there's some laws about livery drivers in New York, who the hell knows. But yes, the idea is ostensibly, if you were to get into Providence Airport with your crazy non-legal in Rhode Island firearm, they could say, what is this? And you're like, oh, I drove here, straight here, uninterrupted from New Hampshire, and I'm getting on your plane, so please GTFO. And then, you know, I mean, it doesn't, I go to Hawaii once a year for Shaka Khan, so like, you can't be like, nope, just passing through on my way to Nebraska. <laughs> Weird connections. Yep. Yeah, cool. the, the second part, kind of like the the what bozo answer is a flare gun 
If you want to get a flare pistol or flare gun, they expel a projectile by means of a combustible propellant. They are, by legal definition, a firearm in all 50 states, and unless somebody in, like, Boston has done something weird with the law, flare guns are unlicensed and unregulated in all 50 states. And you can use them to, you know, end run around the law. You can lock up your bags because of your firearm. And I've done that. I've done that, like, flying internationally, too. Interesting. Mm-hmm. So, uh, do you so, mean, so there, you, there um, is no easy answer about the hey, what happens when I end up in some state that now I have this gun in my hotel room yeah. where I potentially worst could. worst case. I mean, the worst scenario was a gentleman named Greg Ravel. Greg Ravel was from some very free state. I want to say Utah, and he was flying to the East Coast. I think he was like buying a car or something because he didn't understand how the automotive market works, and for some <laughs> reason thought the, the maybe it was like a maybe it was a really nice car in New Jersey. I don't know. But he got stranded because his flight was rerouted. It was an awful like flight itinerary. He got stuck in Newark, and they, you know the airline like puts you up at a hotel, and he had his luggage which had his pistol, and he tried to check back in, and then he got arrested, and then uh, I think Edwin Edward Edwin Nappin uh, Nappin on guns. If you look into the gun law on the East Coast, Nappin represented him, and I believe it was finally dismissed like long after, but probably with prejudice attached, and who knows. But so that's like the the worst case. If you find yourself like screwed in a gun unfriendly zone, just find a cop. Just literally be like, I need airport police, and don't t- be like, you guys f and deal with it. Be like, I got this thing. I'm not supposed to be here. Help. And if you just do that, I mean, I don't in- I don't encourage people to like engage law enforcement on purpose most of the time. <laughs> in yeah. that situation, but yeah, that's that's the thing. Be like, I'm not here of my own free will, and this thing is here that you are angry about. Mm-hmm. Fix it. Yep. Worst case, you know, the the, air, the police airport unit's going to hold it for the night, and they're going right. to voucher it and give you a ticket for it and so forth. Cool. Good. So, mm-hmm. Deviant, when, where are you teaching next? Oof. I don't know. Let me, like, jump Somewhere. on my calendar over here. <laughs> I am... Let's, ooh, we got the list. So, core group will be in Florida for a training in early March. Then we are in San Francisco for kind of, like, an escape and evasion training in mid-March, that it's if you want to get into that, like email us. We can talk to the organizers. We might be able to work something out. We're in Florida again. I'm like living in Florida in spring. Apparently, we're we're. I guess there's worse places to be, right? True. I'm in Florida for Kevin Johnson, Secure Ideas, uh, Professionally Evil. Those cats. You guys know them from Sands. Oh yeah. Yeah. So yeah, Kevin's running a thing that we're gonna pop our heads in there. We'll be down at Sands Orlando. Nice. The no- Nolacon down in New Orleans. We'll be down there in the summer. We'll be at Sands in Maryland. We'll be at Sands. You know, Sands Fire. And then, of course, uh, we'll, we'll see all y'all in Vegas, right, for Blackout, of course. Absolutely. Nice. Oh, yeah. Sounds good. Devian, thanks so much for coming on the show. Pleasure having you. As always, have a good yes, evening. Sir. And uh, with that, we're going to take a short break and come back with our friends from Anapsis. So, right on. Thanks, guys. Stay tuned. Thanks, Devian. See you later. Dinner at RMC Food. Sounds good.